Hi, this is Nicholas Bell with Ion Cinema, here to review Lingua Franca, the third film directed by Isabel Sandoval, which premiered at the 2019 Venice Film Festival in the Venice Day Sidebar. It's the first film directed by a trans woman of color uh, to premiere and compete there. Um, it's the third film directed by uh, Sandoval, who also produced, wrote, and edited the film, and she stars as Olivia, uh, who is a Filipino trans woman uh, who doesn't have uh, citizenship in the U.S., but she's working for Olga, played by Lynn Cohen, who, who passed away earlier this year on Valentine's Day. Um, Olga is this uh, Russian immigrant woman herself, uh, and Olivia is her live-in maid. Uh, Olivia's been talking to some uh, man named Matthew paying him uh, to marry her so she can get her green card, but that kind of dries up. Matthew's met somebody else, uh, another immigrant woman he's fallen in love with. Uh, meanwhile, her best friend Trixie, played by Ivory Aquino, uh, who's al also a friend of hers since childhood, also a trans woman, has just uh, married her own husband and seems to be on her way towards citizenship. Uh, but Olga's uh, troubled grandson, Alex, played by Eamon Farron, uh, who had a role in David Lynch's Twin Peaks The Return, uh, after some substance abuse, issues, substance abuse issues and perhaps some other familial issues, he's come back. Uh, his uncle uh, reluctantly, uh, it seems, gives him a job working in a slaughterhouse while he uh, uh, lives with uh, Lynn Cohen uh, to kind of help Olivia take care of his grandmother, who's... Uh, slowly showing signs of dementia in, the, in this all set in, in the Brighton Beach neighborhood of New York. Um, it's a very fragile, tenuous story, and of course the background of uh, Trump's immigration uh, issues and ICE raids uh, are all shown to be affecting Olivia's state of mind, who is anxious every day, uh, as she tells uh, Alex at one point, who she starts to develop a relationship with. Uh, it's also a very sensual tale uh, because we see uh, Olivia exploring her body, her desires. She's reading D.H. D. Chatterley's, or D.H. Lawrence's Lady Chatterley's Lover. Uh, so all these things in the background as she develops a, uh, a romance with Alex, uh, who it seems is unaware of uh, her being trans until one of his drunken friends breaks into her room because she also stays at Olga's and uh, shows him her passport, uh, which uh, is her, uh, it shows her birth name, uh, her male birth name on there. Um, beyond that, so it's being uh, distributed, which is notable, by Ava DuVernay's Array releasing in certain theaters, but it will be available to stream on Netflix uh, August 26th. Um, just an overall uh, quiet but important narrative. Uh, the slaughterhouse background also reminds me a little bit of Idilko and Yeti's um, On Body and Soul, which won the Berlin Film Festival several years ago. Um, although uh, the best parts, though, are Olivia, who's very a very tranquil, calming screen presence. Uh, I haven't seen Sandoval's two previous films, uh, which I would love to go back and watch. Uh, and Eamon Farron is also uh, interesting uh, as Alex. And it was a pleasure to see Lynn Cohen, who's you know a character actress that's been in a ton of things, including she played Gold in My Ear in Spielberg's Munich, she's been in Sex and the City, etc., etc. Um, and so it, it actually ends on her character, which gives it an even more um, finality to uh, the film. And of course, Lingua Franca is a reference to a common language that two people speak when they don't speak the, uh, the same native language, which is also interesting um, considering immigration, considering uh, the two different cultures that uh, Olivia and Alex are coming from. Um, overall, I would give the film three out of five stars. Thank you. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.